Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from New York City, New York, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to my mom's apartment in Manhattan. Have you spoken to uh, Lalita yet? No, I just got here last night. Oh, Lalita's <laughs> the Indian lady that lives in the building as well. Kastuba's encouraging me to Bring kidnap her. this 90-plus-year-old lady. And sneak okay. her out to the Bhakti Center and feed her Prashad. That's that could be your last chance. Not right? a good you idea. Could, could, That's called human uh, trafficking, Kostuba. That's called stealing but, people. But the benefit for her, you know, that could that could mean the difference between <laughs> going it back to, to the God. Judge. <laughs> well, it'll be worth it. <laughs> it'll be you worth can't it. just take you, old ladies. You, you got to talk you, to their adult children and ask permission. I can be a witness, Ragnar. You can call me to the witness stand as the senior educator of the Bhakti Center in New York. And I will, I will testify to the <laughs> fact that you meant only good in doing so, <laughs> even though she did die on the way to the Bhakti Center. <laughs> I mean, these women are very delicate. The bodies are delicate. They're old, so you take old men and ladies. Very carefully. Very carefully. <clears throat> I mean, my, my, my mom is pretty healthy, but she's, uh, they're delicate like anything. One slip, you know, <laughs> they don't recover. I, you know what? I don't recover as much either anyway uh, as yeah, well. I know all my kids are gearing up for snowboarding season. I think, I think my snowboarding season's over. I Rugged think off. that window has, that. I think that, I think the window's closed. I've closed my window on competitive sports unless they're like easy ones. Like I'll do a little volleyball. <laughs> or... competitive sport. Oh yeah. You're huh? very competitive in volleyball actually. No, I'm just saying like, I'm not gonna play basketball with anyone. You know, I'm not going to play I don't see myself playing football with anyone at this stage. <laughs> at least not a serious game. <laughs> what? What are you laughing about? I can't see you like snapping the ball. I can't see Kasuba playing football with anybody, period. Crunching, tackle, guard and poles, I mean, wide receivers. You don't play you definitely don't play tackle at this age, but even like, you know, just playing a game where you're just, you know, going out for passes. It's enough to get, you know, that kind well, of stuff I know. Well, basketball. You twist I, an ankle, you're out for a long time when you yeah, get this. I, you know? I know, I know. I was, uh, me and Mara, because you know, I don't have to go back to America, and so I was just going to stay in India. So, and I was going to write, and I was like, you know what, we're close to Thailand, let's go to Thailand because I can get in shape. Last time I was there, I just did Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. Now they have these Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu gyms everywhere, they're super cheap, the beaches are beautiful, and I can just relax, write and get in shape. And the more I started thinking about this, I was like, wait a second. The last time I did this was 20 years ago. <laughs> okay. I was in the peak, peak shape of my entire life. Right. I had no body weight, whatsoever, extra body weight whatsoever. And even then I would come back with bruises, the size of Texas on my shins. I was like, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Do you think I'm going to get out of that? But I was like, Maybe I have to switch my idea of uh, uh, phys, phys, I don't know. What did Jeff Eisenberg? What do you think? I mean, he does jujitsu on the regular basis. 
Let me unmute this guy for a second. <laughs> You're getting into it now. I'm sorry. Jeff Eisenberg, I asked you to unmute. Could you unmute for a second? Naked Viking, everyone. Uh, yeah, you're not. Uh, you got to unmute yourself, sir. He's a I black belt. Go for it. He said go for it. He said go for it. Okay, okay, wait. You're muted of course, again. He is a naked what? Viking, okay? He's like... know, he is sort of a Viking. Where's <laughs> jujitsu now? Do you see Wakunda around here anywhere? He's a, another black belt who listens to this show. He says, BJJ can get me sore. Muay Thai kills me. You could get oh, killed. Yeah. BJJ gets you sore. Muay Thai kills you. That's it. Um, where is, where's Makunda, Mara? Do you see him? Yeah, I, uh, let me ask him. Oh, me. That's what he said. Unmute this man. Hey, hey Krishna. Hey, hey yeah. Krishna, G G Mukunda. What do you BJJ think? BJJ might give, get you sore and some bruises, but Muay Thai will kill you. Muay Thai will kill you, right? These guys retire at 19. They start at 12 and retire at 19. Pretty much. But even the last time I did jujitsu, like really rolled hard. It just happened to be that everybody was like twice my size, had 25 years old and has everything to prove and nothing to lose. I'm well, like, hey, be I, careful with you my pinky. Be careful. be careful with my with, elbow. Be careful with my knee. I'm walking in there. Huh? You should be careful with ping pong. OK, <laughs> like, yeah. we do have some competitive ping pong going on these days. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> But then at the same time, I don't want to be like like uh, prematurely aging myself as well. No, anyway, nothing, I'm just saying competitive sports that are real physical where you can get injured. Sports that have like injuries. Well, Careful. that's the interesting thing about the 14th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. See, it all ties into the Bhagavad Gita. Now, now you did it. You tied it in. You tied it in. See, I can take any conversation and bring it right back to the Bhagavad Gita. The 14th chapter, if you want to know if something is good or bad, you just bring it to the 14th chapter. And there's there's no even there's no even judgment here. Anything done in passion. So a, fighting is a sport like that's naturally passionate. You, 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 it's aggressive. Now, within the mode of passion, you can do it a sattvic way. That's what martial arts is, as opposed to just being like this guy who likes to fight a thug on the street. So it. In one sense, it's a passionate thing done in sat done in sattva, right? If it's done right. But whenever things are passionate, it leads to Mara. Suffering. Lust. Anger. Lust. No, no, no. Distress. 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 <laughs> Distress. Whenever things are done in the mode of nice try. Thanks. <laughs> Lust, yeah, whenever things anger. are done in the mode of passion, so there's some distress there. And it 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 it, it appears very attractive things appear like you ever see these guys like Mara's brother does this backcountry stuff where you drop you off of a helicopter on the back of a mountain and you're just going and they're just going down mountain cliffs and it's a very attractive and it's very it's also very dangerous or these guys who do like mountain biking they're going super fast down these tracks it's very attractive very exciting and there's 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 you know there's danger there as opposed to like the guy doing tai chi in the park which is sort of a right. sattvic practice there you go. which can be turned into like a, yeah. a fighting a fighting practice as well Look, but i don't want to see you on a skateboard Raghunath. i don't want to see that you know it's interesting all i was a good skateboarder all my skateboarding skills have somehow disappeared completely yeah. Stay away uh, from it. I can barely stand on them. I don't know. Uh, it's same with the dr drumming. I was a great drummer. I just can't drum anymore. Like a mm -hmm. drum set. Anyway. Naked Viking is pointing out that jujitsu is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. It's actually there in the first verse, kind of. No, not the first verse, right? First. Yuyutsava. Yeah. Prabhupada Dharma said that was, that was jujitsu. Samaveta Yuyutsavaha. Yuyutsu means to battle, to fight. And they right. say that the word jujitsu is derived from it, right? Yeah. And and interestingly enough, and I don't know if it's still there, but on Hicks and Gracie's website, he said Brazilian jiu-jitsu was derived from Japanese jujitsu, which was derived from an Indian wrestling. That's go. what he, Hickson said. I'm not saying that. Hicks you know, Brother, you're, you're real close to that. I think it's called, um, I think it's called, is it Christopher Columbus Park? The park that's kind of there behind the tombs down below Little Italy where all the, where all the Chinese people do their tai chi in the morning? You want me to go down there in the morning? Have you been there before and seen them? 
You know the park I'm talking I think, about? Yeah. Yeah. The little park. You go yeah. there any morning and there's like a whole crew of Chinese older people. You want me to fight them? Call no, them? No, Rogan. I want you to bring Lolita out there and I want you to I'll do a little Lolita. touchy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show him some ankle picks and some Why don't you wizards. Bring her at least on the some... show, at least bring her on the show. <laughs> Single leg takedowns to an old Chinese man. No, no, but this would be interesting. Bring her on the show. Let's find out like what her childhood is like in South India. You know what? That would be great. Do it. She would do it. She would do it. Let's find out. Bring her on tomorrow's show. Okay. Do it. I'll talk to her today over dinner when I'm going to eat okay. with this. I'm going to eat dinner with the centurions you know, tonight. She could probably tell us, yeah, when I was like a seven-year-old girl, my parents took me to Tirupati. We shaved my head. I saw I saw a bottle. Okay, you know bottle. what? I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask her at dinner time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to eat with the with the, with the crew tonight. Let's get, let's she, get my mom's, my mom, show. you don't understand. My mom's got a whole gang, and she's like the gang leader. <laughs> So then your mother should be able to get her on the show. Everybody on the on the chat board, if you want to see Lolita uh, on the show tomorrow, let us know. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Come here. Love me some. What, how do you pronounce did it? Did I ever tell you that crazy Dong. story about my mother and the mafia? And she was yes, dating the did. guy from the mafia. Okay. You did. Forget we heard it. that about 10 times on the show. <laughs> it's <a> good story. <laughs> <laughs> did I ever tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into the All right. the announcements first. The announcements, right? Mara, please. Yes, we, we have back to recovery group meetings at twelve and one thirty Eastern time today, and tomorrow for our Patreon members, we have Asana with the Cult of Cain at ten thirty a.m. Josh Cain's Asana class. It's the Cult of Cain. We're getting a lot of positive reaction here on the chat board, Rogan. People want to see Lolita tomorrow. Oh, really? Okay, I'll talk to Lolita. You know she's. It's hard to uh, she she she's hard of hearing. It's hard every time I'm talking to her. I was like, and, and you know she doesn't speak. She speaks English, but you know every time I talk to her, she's like, "What?" These people are almost a hundred years old, Kostuba. Okay, so I want to see. A lot of the, makes lot of the senses are not. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Okay. We can adapt. We can adapt to that. Okay. Want to hear a nugget, sir? Please. Who's it from? This is from Seneca. Oh, Seneca, you want me to tell you about Famous Seneca? for apple juice. No, okay. No. He, he was a Stoic philosopher of ancient Rome. He was a statesman, statesman, a dramatist, and in one work, a satirist from the post-Augustine age of Latin literature. Hmm. All right. It? It's better to conquer grief than to deceive it. Oh. It's better mm. to conquer grief. Better to, to conquer deceive. grief than to deceive it. How would you deceive grief? I think you deceive grief by faking it. Right? Like in other words, you, your, your, your emotions, your body is calling you to grieve. And you act as if you're not grieving. So you repress it. You repress it. That's what I was going to say. You repress grief. But how do you yeah. conquer grief? So, um, so so you could you could repress it you could be conquered by it like you could just wallow in it and suffer and sulk or you could conquer it and and the reason why i thought this was interesting is because the example that we have right now king chichiketu who grieves oh he he grieves deeply does he not yeah and uh he was rolling and moaning and crying and suffering and then when he heard bob when he heard the the, you know these these this this satyam you know the truth satyam satyam <laughs> so yeah, just have an, and i have an inside joke on that one but anyone that's heard the old stumbadas recordings might know what we're talking about you know i'm going to go to Alachua and find stumbadas next time i'm going to watch him look him up get it. if i can get stumbadas on the show that would be great People He's don't out know. There. But when Raghunath and I got into Bhakti, there was this one empowered preacher. <laughs> he was one like a southern guy. So he had he he sounded like a southern preacher. He sounded like a southern his father was a I think a famous Southern Baptist. Yeah, but I'd say he made these lectures that were so good. He was so he sharp. Might, he might have been the best preacher of all time. He was so sharp and funny. And funny. 
<laughs> no, we're still <laughs> quoting him. Matter of fact, I took a little clip of him. I made I made a, mu- a bunch of little tiny clips of Stambadas and put it on the end of the first shelter CD. Oh, like gotta, as like a secret gotta... track. So that's still available. It's still available. I could probably find it on Spotify. But um, you know, what 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 we're joking about is there's one 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 of his most famous talks that he gave at the what is it? Um Penn State University. Penn State University is where he had a little center. Yeah, it, and it was called a strip down talk about sex, where he just breaks down <laughs> like sexual. What is sexual attraction? And, and he does it in such a hilarious way. And but he opens up the thing because you know it's mostly college students there who are ready to hear his style of presentation, but there are also some like Indian gentlemen like in the back, and he says, "And so we're going to have a strip down talk about sex and." To the uh, Indian gentleman in the back, you know, I'll have to ask you for, to forgive me with some of the language we, we may be using. But actually, anyway, this is this is the truth. This is satyam. Satyam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, I gotta find uh, that. Okay, so so King Chichiketu, he if, from my point of view, he conquers grief because sure. he he goes through it. He experiences it for sure, but then. What it does is it allows him, it almost rings out the the very notion that I can find happiness through materialism in him. And it opens him up mm. to truth. And we're going to see how he conquers it. I just, I'm just going to read you just a taste gonna, of what we're going to yeah. get in the next chapter, okay? Because what happens is he, he, he makes a, a little... Um, what I would call a harmless joke to his friend, Lord Shiva, right? And and Lord Shiva takes no offense to it, but Lord Shiva's wife, Parvati, does, right? And, and uh, are you you're muted right now, Raman? Do you know you're talking to some? You're talking yeah, I know. Mom? My mom's got an alarm going off, and it's. Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So so uh, so. He, he he gives a little he tells a little joke. Shiva is not at all upset. Parvati is upset. She curses him. And, and you know what the curse is? I'm gonna read it to you. What? It's pretty heavy. She says, she says, Oh, impudent one, my dear son. I don't know if that's sarcastic or what. Now take birth in a low, sinful family of demons. Mm-hmm. So that you will not commit such an offense again toward exalted saintly persons in this world. Right. So she cursed him. And that's how he took birth as Richard See, it all huh. ties back in. That's how he took birth as Richard Sorb. So now he gets this. That's a tough curse. Hold it. You know, I got a whole deep spiritual thing going on in this life. And now you want me to take birth in the family of demons so that I'll never even have the association of saintly people in my in my life. That's cold. It feels cold, right? Yeah. And and this is Chitra Cage's, I'm just going to read you the beginning of his response. He, he, he gets down, he says, my dear mother, with my hands folded together, I accept the curse upon me. I do not mind the curse. For happiness and distress are given by the demigods as a result of one's past deeds. Deluded by ignorance, the living entity wanders in the force of the material world, enjoying happiness and distress, resulting from their past deeds, everywhere and at all times. Therefore, my dear mother, neither neither you or I am to be blamed for this incident. It's like he is on a whole nother level. He conquered grief. You know, he could be grieving right now, but now grief doesn't even touch him because he's got such a clear vision of truth established it's like when we're in those gunas when we're in the material world when i'm ray capo or raganath then all these symptoms that are happening to me causing me pleasure or pain they just become my karma they become my uh uh, my sadness my bad turn of events uh, winter season of my life where things are going downhill in bhakti You see the symptoms as the recipe, the symptoms as the cure. Everything that you're getting, you start to see like, that's exactly that's exactly what I need. I got it due to some karma and I'm taking it with a smile on my face because I'm not going to try to pray around it. 
I'm just going to stay connected. And, and 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 Krishna's got a better agenda than me. You think I've got a good agenda? I've got a good plan. My plan's got me into so many trouble, so much trouble. Right. This is Krishna's plan for me. And I trust your plan. And I accept your plan. And now, how can I stay connected throughout this stormy weather? There you go. Hmm. So, so again, going back to Seneca, it is better to conquer grief than to deceive it, right? Mm -hmm. Feel it, lean into it, but don't be conquered by it. Grow through it, and then by growing through it, conquer it to the point where you, you don't grieve like that in illusion, deep in illusion, and again. You know, I have a friend that's, they're not a devotee, uh, but they lost their young son, like 20-year-old son. Um, and I, I could see this, I don't know if the grief ever ends it and, and it, it's sometimes crippling and sometimes she's admitted suicidal makes her suicidal. And it's only seems like you can cope with it. It seems like this is the only way out it to is. give your heart a little res What's the word respite? Yeah. Respect. Respite. Respite. Thank you, Mayor. Really? Respite. <laughs> I had that one wrong. <laughs> You're right, Mayor. Is it respite? <laughs> respite. I think so. Yeah. It's your Rasputin. <laughs> Get your heart some Rasputin. <laughs> now, it, it, it seems like the only way, because everything else can just sort of like, well, it's over, give, give it some time. But to understand actually, and to put your heart at ease, like Krishna has a plan for everything. And it's actually, believe it or not, it's to make me understand I can't own in this world. I can't possess in this world. I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying it's pretty, but it's it's like we were talking about this stoicism, not to make our heart hard, but to cut our heart for things that we don't actually possess anyway. There you go. Cold and to all the we illusion, do, warm. And to refine us and to sand us down. There you go. To be actual lovers. Lovers where we understand like I'm a, I'm a being of love in this world. I'm not a being <laughs> to yeah, what? You didn't know, hashtag right there. Roganoth is a being of love. <laughs> I'm the love the guru. Right I'm a love being. I'm a being of love. No, I'm, I'm a, loving it, right now. I'm Continue. a being of love. And, 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 and it's refining me how to love. I, can, I, I love, but I can't possess. I love, but I can't be, I don't know. How can you love and not be attached? It's it, it, it's a it's, it's a delicate thing. And the thing said, well, you have to love and be attached. Okay, then you're going to have to feel the other side is, of attachment, which unless is, your attachment is will break to, to spirit. In which yeah. case, yeah. All right. You know, I was with. I mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned on the show yesterday. I spent time with uh, Narendra Swami yesterday. You told us. You told us. You said you're going to get him on the show. We talked about it. No, we talked about getting him. Uh, we talked about it, Prabhu. We, you told, we you talked told about us. having it during our Maya Poryatra, right? Yeah, with Maya Poryatra yeah. meeting with him. Yeah. Um, but in any case, he and I were just talking about just the state of the world. <laughs> Jeez. You yeah. Know, and just how much people are suffering. You know, he's dealing with, he's like, I don't even know about America. Well, he's he got up, disciples in Ukraine and Russia, right? And Russia. So, yeah. So, he's, so with he's, that. he's like, I don't. I was telling him like just what a mess America is right now, you know, just like everybody's confused and polarized and disturbed and, and fearful and, you know, and anxiety. And uh, and he was he was saying, you know, I'm totally out of touch with America now. He's lived, uh, you know, mostly in Russia and, and Ukraine and Eastern European countries for so long now. But he was saying, yeah, you know, with the war, you know, on both sides, there's so much suffering. Sure. <laughs> And, and he said what you and I say a lot, and, you know, you, you've often shared on the show. It, it was, it was just, it was, I was thinking of you when he was saying it. Oh. it was, he just said, With, without, without Krishna consciousness, what would we do? You know, how, how do you, what is life without it? If you don't, if you can't see it for what it is, you just get it overwhelmed by it and you're and you're on you know on prescription drugs and committing suicide and, and it, it's and like trying to build a, out. it's trying to like sit in the surf and build a sand castle and every time you build something up something comes and smashes it down yeah you know yeah. and that it... <laughs> okay right. no i thought you were frozen <laughs> no 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 i just 
I'm just appreciating the depth of your realization. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, 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 it can really seem hopeless. And then you see this as a Christian's plan. And, you know, because part when we see a disaster, we actually want to try to fix it. And it's hard to accept that a lot of the things we want to fix are really out of our hands. And there's and there's can fix yeah, how we understand it, how we grow through it. Yeah. And we have some influence there as well, too. Yeah. But when we see when we see da- disaster globally, we try to fix it. And it gets overwhelming. It gets overwhelming. It's like building a sandcastle in the surf. There you go. Mayor's like, I'll jot that down. <laughs> I think that's a Jimi Hendrix lyric right there. So. Is it? I just made it up. No, I, th- I think that metaphor has been used. Before. What building a sandcastle in the surf? <laughs> oh, building a sandcastle. Okay, building a sandcastle. Is... That's been used. Well, <laughs> but the way I did that with the alliteration of the sand and the surf, and then hmm, I thought that was me. Okay, nice. Okay, nice. you go on. By the way, um, we have on the chat board we got uh Tom from Cleveland. Um, What's he saying? He he's remembers the the stumble. Um, oh, he does remember the, the stumble clips that you put at the end of your record. And he said something about, and we call this schizophrenia, we call it pleasure. Right. That ringing? Well, that's who he's talking about sex, actually. And that uh, I play a false role. And no, 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 no. He was saying, he was saying the act of sex for a man. Oh, I, I tell you, I remember. The that. act of sex for a man. Anyway, I don't know if I'm getting yeah, into this. Yeah, let's not get it. It's, 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 it's like young, but it's a little it, too graphic. It is good, though. <laughs> Okay. It's like if I enjoy, it's over. And if I don't enjoy, then I'm not enjoying. And if I enjoy, it's over. I want to enjoy, but I don't want to enjoy. And this going back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. And this yeah. schizophrenia we call pleasure. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, right. Bogbatan, let's get in. Not that that's not Bogbatan. That is Bogbatan. It's Satyam. Satyam. Okay. Narayanam <laughs> Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojayam Dira before he cited the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, which offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, the Shri Vyasadev, the author. Nasta Prayesha Badreshu Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki by regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Jnana Anjana Salakaya Chaksturun Militam Yena Tazmai Shri Guru Vena Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. And my teachers are opening my eyes with a torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Mayor, where are we at? Because I, cl- I shut down my screen. Canto 6, down. chapter 16, text 7. Chapter 16, right. Boomba. 6, 16, 7. 6, 16, 7. So, We're um, making our way through the Bhagavatam. Now King Chichiketu's son has been brought back from the dead. Um, he's now speaking truth to the king and it's blowing his mind. He's more yeah. or less saying, you're not my parents. I've had all kinds of parents. What parents are we talking about here? And now sure. he's going to finger the ladies, the co-wives that, that poisoned him. Ooh. No, he's not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, they do this. They do this. They ever see these uh, police shows where they, they have like some um, uh, medium and they're trying to track down a criminal. And they ask a medium to solve the case. It's a, it's a real thing. Oh God, right now <laughs> that's tough. That combines it was serial murders and and mediums. And this like, is it's a perfect, it's the perfect storm for you, right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, text seven. All right, so now it's the it's the child who's come back the to child. life. That's. Instead of saying the dead child, which sounds really creepy in the morning, let's say the child that's come back to life. How about that? And brought back to life by the it's sage. It's all murder. how you frame it now, Kastuba. No, did I say dead child? Yeah, you said the dead child. Dead Text child. seven. The child that came back to life says, a few living entities, he's going to talk like he's sort of like, a few kind of like living entities, no, no, no emotion. Like or something? He's unemotional. Okay. If few living entities are born in the human species and other, if you think about it, that's true, right? Most only a few be- beings are born in every other species. 
but only a few are born the human species. A few living entities are born the human species, and others are born in, as animals. Although both are living entities, their relationships are impermanent. Okay. Now he's going to give an analogy here, Ragnar. I want to hear what you think about this one. An animal may remain in the custody of a human being for some time, and then the same animal may be transferred to the possession of other human beings. Here, take my cat. Yeah, can you watch my cat while I go to India? As soon as the animal goes away, the former proprietor no longer has a sense of ownership. That's oh right. God. When like, like when Papa Tony takes Gus, Gus, I think Gus like gives all his loyalty. He transfers my loyalty to the new <laughs> master. <laughs> yeah. As long as the animal is in his possession, he certainly has an affinity for it. But as soon as the animal is sold, the affinity is lost. So interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we see that with like 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 my dog. Sometimes Mara's father takes care of my dog, and the dog turns all his affection towards Papa Tony, and Papa Tony turns all his affection, and I sort of like, oh, I'm in India, dog. forget about the dog. You know? So yeah, this is what happens. We have this affinity for a family, and uh, then we lose the family. Not, like and right then we now, take Gus, a birth. I mean, Gus you might even- you as master. Sure, but not only that, it's just like you could lose your family. You'll have an affection for them. You'll have lamentation. You'll have grief. But what happens when you leave your body and you get the new family? That's what, well, that's what I'm saying. About. Gus is going to do. You get that. a new family, and all of a sudden, oh, this is my mother. This is my brother. That's this is my sister. Mean. See now, Gus likely he's going to take birth in the family of Vaishnavas as a human mm. because he's gotten so much bhakti punya by living in your home. He he, I've I've watched him. He daily attends your your puja he does ceremonies. he comes to puja he, he's i mean heard, you never know i mean with animals, animals, right now you right. never you never know look amy Stiller's dog's listening to the bhagavatam right now rolling around he's offering obeisances he's doing done about prickram back I mean, there gus has even gotten like direct you know <laughs> from from great sadhus he's gotten direct mercy so he's likely to take birth in a family of vaishnavas in his next life and then he's not even an know anything about you Ragnar. maybe unless you have you know you don't maybe understand gus, come here. gus could have been like an iskhan devotee from 1972 doing <laughs> kirtan wow. on the streets but perform some sinful activity and it's like you got to take one more birth as a dog because you've got a dog-like mentality and then you're going to be then you're going to be liberated you know what I mean? So he takes birth in a family. He gets Prashad. He goes, he has Darshan. If you think about sometimes when you go to holy places like a Haridwar mm -hmm. or Rishikesh or Brindavan, there are dogs who just live at the Ganga. Raghunath, There's monkeys who I just wasn't... eat Prashad. There's a crocodile in South India. I wasn't that just even... eats Prashad. I wasn't even going to mention this, but sometimes I worry that I'm going to take birth as a dog in the Holy Dom, you know? Like, okay, one last Why one worry second. about that? That's a great thing. Are you kidding? Well, I'll tell you why. I, if I get that, I, that, that you're just like like sometimes uh, sometimes I worry about I'm gonna get a Lamborghini. Are you no, kidding? No, well, but no, but Ragnar, I tell you, I saw something that was horrific the other day. What? I just saw a dog. I, I was getting on a bike and I was at nighttime. Do you have to say this? Most Americans have never. Oh, it was just so hard. All right, you saw a sick dog. That's let's just leave it at that. Okay. But but you know what? I get it. But. Guess what? It was out of a horror movie, Robin. That's what Guess what, Prabhu? You're a dog. I mean, not in that sense <laughs> right. at all. Meaning you have a body. That body is going to get gross one of these days. You know what not, I mean? I have you ever seen a kid break their like, arm and the bone, bone is protruding like from dog. the arm? Have you ever seen that? I never have. But, it, 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 you know, ask the fireman, ask Connor the fireman or the EMTs that are on, listening to the show. They've seen gory stuff happen to the body. That's what you get when you get a body. You get the gore that goes with the beauty. So yeah, we don't want to take birth again. I get that, but Preach. but to be to be born in a, in a holy place, it's a great benefit. No it's, it's, it's a it's a, it's a great benefit, you know. Okay, you convinced me. Yeah, you know sometimes we say things like this, like to be born in a holy place is a special thing. You don't get that until you, can't you go even to the holy. Calculate how special. You, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't get like the, like 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 Shankaracharya says in the Ganga Stotra. Mara, say it. Rogam show. Oh no, not that. It's better to be born um uh 
animal. Better to be born a turtle or a fish or even a dog eater on the banks of the Ganga than to be a king living far away. Is it better to be a dog or wait, better to be a turtle or a fish? You know what the or life even of a, a dog turtle eater. is? Yeah. Life of a turtle is hard. Is it? Right? It, uh, yeah. Or or a person that eats a dog? Better to be born like that? Than to be born of a like a Vedic king, or that sounds like a crazy statement. No, no, no. If you think about it, and if you go to the whole places and see, drinking Ganges water, being with sadhus, eating the remnants of sadhus. Dogs just eat the remnants. They hang around. My dog will hang under my table until I slip him a piece of bread or something, right? And Mary, and Mary always says, "Don't feed the dog at the table." But that. but I'm just saying the dogs just naturally beg. So imagine a dog in a holy place just eating the prashad all the time. And we say that prashad is non different than Lord Vishnu. It's like you're, it's like you're communing with Lord Vishnu at every moment. These are not ordinary animals maybe, that are born in these places. And and that's what they say. The bridge bossies, the people that are born in those places. It's not ordinary. Even though they're doing ordinary activities, driving rickshaws or running a little shop, they're always thinking about Krishna. Krishna is always on their mind. Me? It's hard work to keep spiritual things on my mind. These guys are always thinking about even the lossy guy. Even the lossy guy. <laughs> Such a anyway. nice six fingers. No, no, no. The you know who the lossy guy is. I won't mention his name, but he, the lossy guy, the oldest lossy guy we know from Vrindavan. Now he's Down like by Monkey Bihari? No, 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 no. The real Lassie guy, right? He used to be oh, a friend of course, Krishna of Bar. Okay. I mean, I right, don't see so, him as just a Lassie guy, but okay. He's well, got all yeah, I get it. That's what he did. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, but, but he was like, yeah, you want to see my family? He showed me his family tree once, going back to the Goswamis of Vrindavan. You know, these guys, it's in their bloodline to worship Krishna. Yeah. Raghunath, it's not he's, ordinary he's birth. Because he was a bit of a gangster. He was a little bit of a gangster. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, so um, uh, I was thinking maybe you and I next birth could be so fortunate that we take birth in the dom. But maybe like as a couple of jackals, like we're walking around. You know? A couple of jackals? Nighttime. You know? <laughs> you know what? I like Let's to talk about it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> All right. All right. Text eight, is it now? Or is it the next one? No, text eight. Text eight. <laughs> text eight. Text eight. Okay, so here's the boy back to life speaking. Even though one living entity becomes connected with another because of a relationship based on bodies yeah. that are perishable, the living entity is eternal. Let me just read that again. Even though one living entity becomes connected with another, because of a relationship based on bodies that are perishable. The living entity is eternal. Actually, it is the body that is born or lost, not the living entity. This is like the, the, the absolute truth. The mysteries of the universe have dropped on our lap, Kostuba. This right is what the whole world needs to hear. That's right. We can solve all material problems with this sentence, man. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm with the world's you. got a lot of problems right now. We can help them. We can help. <laughs> they just got to read this book. We're here. Raghunath and I are here. We are Take our here help. for you. All this, Take like, you know, it, the problems between even even different religious religious groups. Let's come together. Let's have a ecumenical uh, study of uh, world out. religions. We can work this all out. Here. We're just going to read these chap. This is how we're all connected. It's going gonna, it's gonna to iron out all the problems that we have right here. As soon as the animal, or actually, uh, actually, body, as the living being, what what text are we on, Mary? I can't do this without you. Text that eight. The living entity takes text birth eight. or dies. Okay, living being actually has no relationship with the so-called fathers and mothers. Wow, the living being actually has no relationship with the so-called really fathers and mothers. Too. I tell you, the anti-cult people love this stuff. They're like, see, they're trying to break you up from your family. The living being actually, no, okay, no, one no. should not accept that the living entity takes birth or dies. Don't accept Don't it. Don't accept it. Yeah. The living being actually has no relationship with the so-called fathers and mothers. Nothing. As long as he appears as the son of a certain father and mother, as a result of his past fruit of activities, he has a connection with the body given by that father and mother. 
Mm. Thus, thus he falsely accepts himself as their son and acts affectionately. After he dies, however, the relationship is finished. Oh, that's a little sad. <laughs> Under these circumstances, one should not be falsely involved with jubilation or lamentation. How this is so pa- Brother, See, this is I where stoicism is tied in with <laughs> satyam. I think you were reading these verses right before you went back to visit your parents back when you were a brahmachari, and you freaked them out. Yeah, yeah. I freaked them out. I, I think I read this one to my mom on Christmas morning. <laughs> I was like, you're not my mother. Okay, text nine. No wonder why you only got a box of Jiffy Corn Muffin mix. Yeah, that's all you deserve. Okay, you're not my son here. Have a box of Corn Muffins. <laughs> oh, don't remind me of my childhood trauma. I still, I still, uh, let it go, brother. Yeah, okay. Corn muffin mix. Who would do that? <laughs> who would give a box? Who would even wrap a box of corn muffin mix? And her response, her response to that, mom, there's only a box of corn muffin mix under the tree <laughs> for me. Her response, you like corn muffins. There you go. I thought you liked corn muffins. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Okay, hit it. Text nine. nine. The living entity is eternal and imperishable because he actually has no beginning and no end. He never takes birth or dies. He is the basic principle of all types of bodies, yet he does not belong to the bodily category. The living being is so sublime that he is equal in quality to the Supreme Lord. Mm. Nonetheless, because he is extremely small, He is prone to be illusioned by the external energy. And thus, he creates various bodies for himself according to his different desires. Dropping the truth. Satyam. Satyam, boom. Wow. Amazing, huh? You got a little breather here? You're not ready to go into the next text? (laughs) No, this is is really... I mean, first of all... I mean, you gotta just envision what's going on here. Everybody's in a room lamenting, crying. These sages came in, sort of in disguise, and they introduced like they're gonna bring the soul back into a body. The body sits up and is speaking like these heavy truths to the father. And Text the co-wives. ten. And the co-wives. The co-wives. The co-wives. I mean, must if be I like was, co- if, if I was, I was one of those po- co-wives. And this sort of like miracle is happening. You're like, oh, God, this is going to get bad. Co- if, if I was a director of this film, I'd keep going back to the face of the co-wives. You know, I know. Like just sweat. like what's going to happen. They must what's be sweating. <laughs> uh, for this, by the way, last time I was in Mayapur, I'm not sure if you were with me. They did a play of this. The the, the chill the, the not children like the teenagers did a play of this, and it when, was where where were you? I was in Mayapur, and they the did last the, time we were in Mayapur. The last time we were in Mayapur, they did a play of this, and it was amazing. Wow, it was amazing. Like you we were like crying, you were laughing back together, were... and do it for our for our for our pilgrimage. Maybe we could figure that out. Ooh. Maybe we should do a pl- maybe we should do a play. You and me. Tar was just saying that he was saying I was you saying me do a play. I was I was saying to Tar because we're planning out the 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 uh, pilgrimage, and I was saying I just think one important thing is we just need to find some really nice places to sit, and and we'll read and, and share about Sri Chaitanya's leelas here. Mm-hmm. And he said, "Yeah, no, that's a good idea." And he said, "And actually, we could do skits, you know." Like, you know what? I'd be happy on this Mayapur trip if we just sit yes. by the Ganga and read. That's what I'm talking just about. Just read. The, yeah, just sit there and read every now and get you know to, get to too do hot. Release? You jump in the water, get back well, we, out, read again, have a little we'll, snack. We'll go to the jump in the water. We'll go to the Ganga temple, and just like good Indians do in their temples, we'll get the microphone. You know, so that we're like broadcasting it out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll read Chaitanya a dramatic Leo. reading. A dramatic yeah, reading. Okay. That would be That's great. Good. And then at night we read the Mahabharat. We read the new Mahabharat. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if we can do that legally. Just to our group. 
Right. We should do something uh, for the people that aren't going. We should do some one night. We'll do it like Sweet Baby, Sweet Baby Nima. By the way, you you I spoke to with Brahma Tirtha Rabu. He said reach out to Ridai Nandamaraj and. Uh, oh line really? It up. Line it up. Oh, are you sure? Okay. I him. will. I love talking to also, Ridai Nandamaraj. He wants you to help him with some matchmaking. He, he was asking me to help him with some matchmaking. I was like, Ragnar's the guy you got to talk to. He's like, he's into that. <laughs> yeah. So, because so I'm really good at reaching ma- out to you, I think. I think he's going to be reaching out to you. Or you should reach out to him, maybe. Matchmaker, matchmaker. All right. Okay. Next text. For this living entity, no one is dear, nor is anyone unfavorable. He makes no distinction between that which is his own and that which belongs to anyone else. Right. There's like there's such a deep understanding of non possessiveness. Right. That doesn't mean you steal things. Okay. We were brahmacharis. That's what we would do. We would go for a morning walk and see beautiful who this belongs to. That means I could take it. Right. (laughs) That's where my mind goes immediately. Instead of like let go of everything. I'm walking down the street. I see someone's beautiful gar- garden, and I'm thinking, them. ah, those are Krishna's flowers. I'm going <laughs> to pluck all their flowers and offer them to Krishna. No, you can't do That's stuff Krishna's like that. It's Krishna's car. <laughs> it's Krishna's car. Okay. Um, this is a, okay. true grand theft auto. It's like... <laughs> it's... <laughs> I'm just giving it back to Krishna. For this living entity, no one is dear, nor no, he is, is one anyone. No, without a second. Oh, you, okay, he makes sorry. no distinction between that which is his own and that which belongs to anyone else. He is one without a second. In other words, he is not affected by friends and enemies, well-wishers or mischief mongers. That is a big deal. Sometimes I get – someone wrote something a little a little uh, hurtful about me, to me. Longer. It's not like they did it behind my back. They did it right to my face. And oh. I, I, I was so hurt. <laughs> Oh. Mayor, remember how hurt I was? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Tell us, Mayor. Oh, someone, someone said they, I, I hate you singing on the show all the time. It's like <laughs> I, I love your podcast, hate, but it was a little I, harsh. I was like, I, lo- I love your podcast, but Raghunath singing has to stop. I'm going to stop listening to this podcast. The and I was like, listening right now. <laughs> ow! Ow! <laughs> ow! <laughs> it disturbed me for three days. Oh. And I was thinking, um, you know, a lot of like reactions happened. And then I just sort of like, whatever I internalized, but like that shouldn't bother me. I shouldn't, it shouldn't be bothered by people's opinions. You know what I mean? I should just you might want to listen with... to them though. <laughs> What's that? You might want to listen to them. Ouch. No, I'm oh, not, I think you're speaking generally. Oh, speaking generally. Well, I get a lot of people say I like the singing too. So I can listen to them, too. I, my, 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 my point is I shouldn't get swayed by people saying, I love your singing and I don't like your singing. Not Just like when you say, hey, Raghu, stop singing. I ignore you. You know why? Because, you know, I'm I'm supposed to be indifferent. I'm not sure that that's I think that's kind of like the thing about thinking <laughs> that you can take anyone's property. <laughs> I think that's a bit of a misinterpretation. Oh, uh, Krishna. All right. Okay. There's one more line to this. There's a heavy line. All right, sorry. Sorry. He is only the observer. Text him, right? He is only, he is only the observer. The soul is only observer, a witness of different qualities of men. Okay. That's- Laura Rabino says, just be you, Ragu. Thank you, Laura. No, but less singing, for sure. Oh, Timothy Tucker says... Never stop Seems singing like on your own. All you want. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mara, are there any announcements today? Uh, or or, or uh, takeaways, rather. Right. Yeah. I think uh, Timothy Tucker is a takeaway, Mara. He forgot to put the hashtag on. Never stop singing. Never That's stop singing. Yeah. Oh. Except on the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, let grief open you up to truth. Let's Let's yum. See the symptoms as the cure. Okay. See the symptoms as the cure. You like that? Do, do I like the cure? No. See the symptoms as the cure. Do you like that? <laughs> do you like I, I don't cure? quite get it, actually. I, I you know, it, 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 it's just like the triggers. The triggers are things that are driving me crazy. 
Like that's a trigger. I have a trigger warning. Here. That acts. It, that's that needs to be examined. And that is so. Can that's going to help me. That's going to make gotcha. me grow. I have to deal gotcha. with that. It's okay. not for you to stop triggering me or the world to stop triggering me. This is everything I need to so grow. The triggers will trigger growth. If you if you if you interpret otherwise, you're just going to walk around getting triggered by the world. You, gotcha. You, you cre- neurosis. Gotcha. Got that. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Grow yeah. through and conquer grief. Grow through it. Conquer it. We can love, but we can't possess. We can, we can love, try. but we can't possess. Without Krishna, it's just sandcastles being washed away in the surf. Oh, I think we got the uh, the Jimi Hendrix lyric up here. Oh. Someone shared that. Castles made of sand melt into the sea. Eventually, Jimi Hendrix, right there. Huh. I'm thinking like Jimmy. I never, ever listened to Jimi Hendrix ever. Go search it out, brother. I'm not interested. <laughs> you know why? You know why I don't listen to Jimi Hendrix, right? Because of the cover of that record. Where yep. He, out to he cut Jesus. out. He got this picture of Mahavishnu uh, or the Universal Form. He cut his head, his face out. And him in there, in and put, he cut out Vishnu's face and put his face. But I, I've heard that it wasn't his idea. He he wasn't responsible for that. Yeah. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord said that Lord cover was a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake. It's, mistake like he, it was stupid for him to do or mistake like he never meant for it to happen? I don't know. I didn't write it. Laura Bino wrote it. But, but the thing him. was, it's not good he to cut out him. God's he, face he, and put your he, face he, in there. Oh, he meant. Oh, he said like do it like an Indian themed thing. And then they did that. Oh, uh, whoops. Like that's back when the record company had full control. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps. I don't know. OK, right. go on. Back Mara. to our takeaways. Yeah. Yeah. We get exactly what we need. Okay. Tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Krishna has a better plan. Better than better my plan, that's for sure. Yeah. Better than yeah. mine. I think I have some pretty good plans, too. <laughs> Krishna's got Stone Wall worked one. out pretty good. Well, the Stone Wall did work out pretty good, but that might have been Krishna's plan, too. <laughs> okay. Because you know what? It brought a lot of me and Jamie Step Dojo, me and uh, Vegan Trucker, me and Chris Pett. We, yeah. You know. There's a lot of me and Brandon. We just all worked. It brought people together. I think it might have been Krishna's plan, that stone wall. Okay. Bhagavatam solves the world's problems. It's all right there. It really does. And mm-hmm. you can't just take old ladies. You, you can't can just them. take you them. You can. Kostuba. You can. You can. Hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm driving around with a truck morning. filled with old centarians in my... <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, Lalita. Pull over, sir. Take What's in the back of your truck? Why just take uh, Lalita? Take the whole gang to the Bhakti Center. Take the whole table. <laughs> get one of those Uber, like, maxed out cars, you know, and uh, and get the whole get the whole gang over. But no, Lalita. I was thinking more morning. like a paddy wagon. <laughs> we want Lalita tomorrow morning. Make it happen, Captain. Oh, Krishna. Did you say make it happen, Captain? Yeah. What's that from? Star Trek? <laughs> Do you, think, do you think Scotty said that or something? Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Oh, look who's here. It's Tina Scheid, Hannah Brinkhouse. Harry Ball, you guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Wisdomofthesages.com. Sign up for a mailing list. Not that we ever said you anything. But, you know, ever, ever get, like, emails repeatedly from, like, what, whatever, Wayfair? I always get what I bought something from Wayfair. I get an email three times a day from these guys. We will not send you emails that much, but still get on our mailing list at wisdomofthesages.com. Follow us on Instagram, Wisdom of the Sages. And uh, follow me, Raghunath Yogi, on Instagram. What about um, me? Uh, what am I, Chopper? Kastuba. Here? Well, there's some other Kastubas out there, so I don't want to confuse them. I'm the only one Kastuba out there. Well, you'll know this Kastuba. Uh, follow M. Simons Jones, too. There's <laughs> like, don't follow me. I was the only one who doesn't want people to follow her. Uh, uh, she never asked for it, but you became somewhat of a celebrity, Mara. 